Hey, how's it going? This video is going to be on the big golden book for Disney Pixar The Good Dinosaur. I am going to read through this, but I just wanted to show the front cover and uh, the back cover. Uh, the front cover looks really nice, but uh, on the back right here it says Arlo the Apatosaurus is lost in the wilderness. Will his new friend, a human boy, help him find the way home? And uh, this book cost $9.99. So I'm going to start reading and see what The Good Dinosaur is all about. So here we go. Um, inside, on the inside cover, you can put your name right there, and uh, the story starts right here. Henry and Ida were plant-eating dinosaurs who lived on a farm near a wide river at the base of Clotsooth Mountain. The happy couple worked very hard to make their home the perfect place to raise a family. Three eggs would soon be hatching, and then, one day, as Henry was out watering the crops, it's time, Ida called. The first two eggs to hatch were a boy and a girl. Buck, said Henry, and Libby, added Ida. The third egg was the biggest. Crack. Inside, an anxious little dino stood up and fell right back down. Henry chuckled. Hello, Arlo. Their family was complete, and together they would take care of the farm. As the young dinosaurs grew, Mama and Papa built a silo. When it was done, they added their marks. Footprints placed on the silo. The children wanted to make their marks, too. You earn your mark by doing something big for something bigger than yourself, Papa said to the children. Someday, you'll all make your mark, and I can't wait to see it. Buck earned his mark by clearing a field of trees. Libby earned hers by plowing. Arlo tried to earn his by feeding the family's animals. Even though they frightened him, he didn't give up. I'm going to make my mark like everyone else. Ooh, this looks nice. Um... One night, Papa took Arlo into a field of tall grass. A firefly landed on Arlo's nose. He froze in terror. Papa blew gently on the insect. It lit up and fluttered away. You gotta get through your fear to see the beauty on the other side, he said. Then Papa swished his tail. Hundreds of twinkling fireflies filled the air. Papa had a new job for Arlo. A critter had come to the farm and was stealing their food. If Arlo got rid of the critter, he would earn his mark. Arlo and Papa found the critter in the silo eating their corn. They chased it into the wilderness. Suddenly, a flash flood raged down the riverbed. Papa quickly pushed Arlo to safety, but as he did, Papa slipped and fell into the roaring water and disappeared. Without Papa, the family was sad. They struggled to keep up with the farm work. You need to rest, Mama, said Arlo. I'm okay, she replied. If we don't get this harvest in before snow hits, we won't make it. Don't worry, Arlo said. I won't let us starve. At the silo, Arlo heard a rustle. It was the critter. You, he cried. This is all your fault. The critter grunted, then it jumped onto Arlo's head, slid down his back, and ran off. Arlo gave chase, but the critter startled him, sending them both into the river. Help, Arlo cried. Mama. The little dinosaur struggled to stay above the water as the fast-moving river pulled him farther from home. When Arlo finally washed up on the shore, he slowly got to his feet and called Mama. But there was no answer. Arlo was trapped between the river and a steep wall. Then he heard the critter howl from the top. That critter was the one who had caused all of Arlo's problems. Furious, Arlo tried to climb up to it. When an exhausted Arlo finally reached the top, the critter was gone. Wilderness stretched for miles, and Arlo couldn't see Clawtooth Mountain. As he watched the river below, he remembered his father's words, Find the river, and you can find your way home. Slowly, Arlo followed the river. Just as he started to feel hungry, he spied berries. But even by stretching his long neck, he couldn't quite reach. Ah. Arlo tumbled down onto the rocks. As he struggled to stand, he realized that his foot was stuck. When darkness fell, all Arlo could do was curl up and try to sleep. Later, Arlo awoke to find his foot was free. The critter's footprints were everywhere. Could the critter have released him? Soon the rain started again. Arlo made himself a very small, very leaky shelter. As the rain stopped and Arlo got settled, something moved in the bushes. It was coming right at him. 
It was the critter, and the critter was really a human boy. The boy brought Arlo a lizard for breakfast, but Arlo only ate plants. Next, the boy brought Arlo a dead bug. Yuck. Arlo pushed it away. Finally, the boy offered him fresh berries. Arlo gobbled them down and asked for more. The boy led the dinosaur to the berry tree. When Arlo reached for the fruit, a poisonous snake prepared to attack him. Terrified, Arlo scrambled away, but the boy jumped in front of Arlo, defending the frightened dinosaur. He growled and barked at the snake, driving it away. Arlo couldn't believe it. The boy had just saved his life. Just then, a strange Therakosaurus emerged from the woods. He was a pet collector, and he wanted the boy to be his new pet. The dinosaurs decided that whoever gave the boy a name he would respond to could keep him. Beast, this Therakosaurus yelled. The boy didn't move. Spot, yelled Arlo. The boy smiled. The Styracosaurus harumphed. Clearly, Spot was meant to be with Arlo. After nightfall, Arlo and Spot found a place to camp by the river. I miss my family, Arlo said. Spot stared at Arlo, and then he leaned back and howled. The boy missed his family, too. Arlo let out a long, sorrowful howl of his own. Together, Arlo and Spot continued walking along the river. Without warning, the sky unleashed a powerful storm. It reminded Arlo of the day he had lost Papa. Arlo was so frightened that he ran aimlessly, looking for a place to hide. Spot followed close behind. They finally took shelter under the roots of an overturned tree. Yeah, there's Butch. After the storm, there were fallen trees everywhere. Help, Arlo called, and a pack of pterodactyls descended from the sky. At first, Arlo thought they were friendly, but the pterodactyls attacked and tried to fly off with Spot. Arlo grabbed Spot and ran as fast as he could. He thought he saw other dinosaurs like himself and yelled for help, but they turned out to be T-Rexes. Arlo and Spot were sure they were doomed. To Arlo's surprise, the T-Rexes were friendly. Butch and his two children, Nash and Ramsey, were out searching for their lost herd of longhorns. That gave Arlo an idea. Spot can sniff out anything, he said. He can find your longhorns. In return for their help, the T-Rexes promised to lead Arlo and Spot back to the river. Spot picked up the longhorn and scent quickly and started barking. When Butch saw the feather Arlo found, he grunted. He knew that he knew what that meant. Their herd had been stolen. Rustlers, we gotta move. <laughs> the herd was grazing over the next ridge, but the rustlers were hiding in the tall grass. Butch wanted Arlo to lure them out. What if they have claws and big teeth? asked Arlo. Don't overthink it, Butch replied. Arlo climbed onto a large rock, but was too scared to do anything. Spot helped by biting his leg. Chomp. Ah, Arlo screamed. Well, that's pretty cool. The wrestlers, who were actually a group of raptors, charged. The T-Rexes sprang into action, fighting off the raptors while trying to control the herd. Giddy up! Come on now! Giddy up! They shouted. Soon the raptors had Butch pinned to the ground. Arlo pushed aside his fear and headbutted the raptors away. When the fighting was all over, the T-Rexes had their herd back. That night, the T-Rexes shared their stories of bravery around a campfire. Arlo sighed. I'm done with being scared. Listen, kid, you can't get rid of fear, Butch said, but you can get through it. Find out what you're made of. The next day, Arlo and Spot helped drive the herd toward a watering hole. Over a hill, there was a welcome sight. Clawtooth Mountain, shouted Arlo. You'll be alright, said Butch. You're one tough kid. Arlo smiled. It was time to go home. Keeping Clawtooth Mountain in sight, Arlo and Spot ran through the fields, jumped across boulders, and climbed to the top of a rocky hill. Spot scrambled onto the dinosaur's head. Arlo stretched his neck, and his head poked up above the clouds. Wow, said Arlo. When Arlo and Spot reached the river, they saw that they were near the mountain pass that led home. The two friends howled with joy. Someone howled back. It was a human, just like Spot. Spot stopped and sniffed the air, but Arlo didn't want his friend to leave. We need to get home. Thunder and lightning filled the sky as Arlo and Spot made their way to the pass. Without warning, the pterodactyls swooped out of the clouds for another attack. Spot screamed Arlo as a pterodactyl grabbed his friend and flew away. 
The pterodactyl carried Spot to the river. Fighting back, the boy was able to squirm out of his captor's grip. He scrambled away and hid inside a hollow tree, but the pterodactyls found him. Spot was trapped. Just then, Arlo ran down a steep slope. With his head down, he charged at the closest pterodactyl and knocked it into the river. He glared at the others and bared his teeth. Then Arlo snapped a tree in half and swung it into three more pterodactyls. Finally, he let out a terrifying roar, scaring the last attacker away. All of a sudden, a flash flood churned through the pass. Arlo leaped in front of a huge wave and tried to reach Spot, but the water snapped Spot's tree at the base. It pushed Arlo's friend even farther away from him. Arlo was determined to save Spot. He fought the strong current and swam until he and Spot were back together. Unfortunately, they were headed for a waterfall. The friends held each other tight and plummeted over the edge. Arlo and Spot splashed into a deep pool. After a few moments, they burst to the surface and gasped for air. They were okay. Arlo got them to shore, exhausted but safe. Oh no! <laughs> The next morning was sunny and clear as they began the last day of their journey home. The farm was in the distance. Spot howled a happy howl. The howl was returned. The human had come back. And this time he had brought his family. Spot went to them and sniffed. The mother and father smiled and gently tussled his hair. With his muzzle, Arlo drew a circle around Spot and the others. Uh... Spot climbed onto Arlo, but the dinosaur set him on the ground. Spot tried to climb back on, but Arlo pushed him away. Arlo knew it was time for Spot to be part of a family again, so the two friends said goodbye. As Spot walked off with his new family, Arlo heard him howl once more, and Arlo howled back. Oh, okay. Not long after, Arlo finally arrived home. At first, Mama didn't recognize the strong, confident dinosaur standing by the silo. But then, Arlo, she cried, and ran to her son. The family reunited joyfully. Arlo moved toward the silo and dipped his foot into the mud. Then he put his footprint on the stone. Arlo had done something big, and he had earned his mark, just as Papa knew he would the end so this was a, a pretty interesting story for the good dinosaur it's nice to see how everything happens or how arlo gets lost and the little survival story with arlo and spot with the the t-rexes and the raptors and pterodactyls and styracosaurus i hope i'm saying that one right but yeah it's cool to see the t-rex be good and the raptors and pterodactyls being who they usually are. So uh, I can't wait to see The Good Dinosaur in theaters next month. I think it's a little bit over a month away, but um, I'm definitely for sure watching this in theaters. I'm not sure if it has IMAX 3D or if it's just 3D, but I might just see it in 2D if it's not in IMAX. I'm guessing it's not in IMAX, but... Anyway, that's pretty much it for this. So again, this was on the big golden book for Disney Pixar, The Good Dinosaur. I will see you all later, and thanks for watching.